Now I'm pretty keen on carpentry, and I've got to be because I'm currently renovating my own farm cottage, as well as being mad keen on bikes, as we all know. Now, something that happens when you've got lots of bikes is that they have a tendency to lie up against one another and they get scratched, rear derailleurs get knocked out of place, and you get all sorts of troubles caused by that. So today, let's build a bike storage stand. Now we are going to need some equipment of course, so first of all we're going to use some timber as well as a saw. You don't necessarily need something quite as big as this, as well as an electric screwdriver. Again you can use a handheld one, a manual one, but this one is going to make it just a little bit easier. As well as a tape measure, a pencil and importantly some screws. Oh, and don't forget the safety specs. The size of the bike stand totally depends on your own requirements. So personally, what I'm going to be building today is a stand suitable for three road bikes. So they're going to have enough breathing room to fit three bikes with 42 centimeter handlebars and 700 C wheels. If you want to see the sizes of timber that I'm using, you can find the information for that down there in the description below. Right, firstly, I'm going to start by making my end board. So I've got a pretty long bit of wood here. 2.4 meters long, so I'm gonna cut it dead center, but don't worry, you'll start to see this jigsaw come into shape pretty soon. Next up, I'm gonna start constructing the wheel support. So at this point, it's probably not that clear actually how this bike stand is gonna work. Well, it's actually gonna work by holding each individual wheel in place so the bike doesn't fall over. So for this, I'm gonna need six individual bits to help that rack start to work. So I've actually calculated that 500 millimeters in length is gonna be just about right for 700 C wheels. Then the height, well, about nine centimeters high. I could go a little bit higher if I wanted to, but I don't actually want the rack to be that heavy because if I'm going to start moving it around and stuff, I don't have the biggest of arms to actually deal with that. So I'm going to mark up six lengths of 500 mil timber here. And remember, it's the nine centimetre depth one. And then once I've chopped it up, we're going to make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing where it actually matches up with the end boards. Because we've got a chop saw with us, it seems rude not to use it. Now I've got my six wheel supports chopped up, hopefully you can start to see how it's going to take place. So this is the end board here for the support of the actual frame, and then here, this is where you're going to put your wheel in between so the bike stands up. There is a blazingly obvious uh, difference in the heights of wood, but with a good reason. I want the wheel to be supported nicely from the sides, but what I'm going to do is actually take out some material here to a point about 100 millimetres along, so that's 26 millimetres difference. Just going to taper that off just to make it a little bit nicer to look at. Of course, if you're really good with a saw, you could even, well, possibly curve that there too, but I'm not that good with a saw. Point to point, it should be fairly easy. Sadly, I can only cut up to a 45 degree angle, otherwise I'd be like, all over this, but uh, fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't lose the fingers. Yeah. Looks good to me. See what I'm doing? <laughs> it's coming together nicely. Just five more to go. So I've got my six wheel supports now all done. And well, I've got a big pile of sawdust too, so the hamster at home will be nice and happy. Now all I need to do is mark up on one of my end boards exactly where these wheel supports are gonna go. So I'm definitely gonna put one on the end to be able to create the frame. And then four centimeters along, so 40 millimeters, I'm gonna put the other one. The reason being, I don't have any bikes at home with tires wider than that. Of course, if you do, you're gonna to wanna to have a bigger gap there. If I do use my side 
cyclocross bike, decide to put it in here. That's got tyres of 35 millimetres wide. So that will fit in there okay. Even if I got them pumped up really hard, let a bit of air out and it will go in there absolutely fine. I'm going to repeat that on the other end exactly the same and then I'm going to find the centre most part of this. So it's going to be 60 centimetres. Then measure two centimetres either side and that's going to give me my position for the central wheel support. So what we do now is we're just going to literally mirror those measurements or those lines onto the other end board so it's nice and simple when it comes to attaching those wheel supports in place. So depending on what facilities you have, either at your workshop or in your own home or at your place of work, in my case, depends on how easy this step is going to be. So I've rested one bit of timber here, the end board, up on this chop saw, and I've actually started to thread the screw in separately. So I'm not having to do all the, well, hold three things at once, essentially. So I've got that there, nicely lined up square. If you have got a big old clamp, this is going to make it much easier. But you want to make it nice and square, and then simply let, hopefully, an electric screwdriver do all the hard work for you. As you can see there, the actual screwdriver bit did start to slip a little bit, but don't worry, if you're using a decent screwdriver bit and also decent screws, you won't round anything off. Essentially, you want the main frame structure to start taking place, then you can really torque these up a little bit tighter so it's nice and stable. Oh, the jigsaw is coming together. Can you see what it is yet? Yeah, that's right, we're nearly there. We've just got to put this last little end board on and then we'll go and put some bikes in it. Not bad, is it? For a few bits of timber, nice. So I'm just going to torque up all of the screws now so they're all nice and tight in there and we'll go and test it out. Something you may want to consider doing as well is possibly sanding it down just to get rid of any rough edges, something like that. And maybe add some wood stain too to help preserve this wood, particularly if you ride in wet places and you put a wet bike in there at the end of your ride. Right, I suppose we better find ourselves some road bikes with 700c wheels to uh, try this one out. There we are, three bikes racked up, ready to ride, and they're not going to get scratched, they're not going to get bashed on their rear mechs, which is always good news, isn't it? Let me know what you think of it down there in the comment section below. Also, what would you like me to make next? Get involved in the comment section. Don't forget too to like and share this video with your friends. Give a big old thumbs up and now for another great video this time Dan Lloyd making his very own chain whip yes that's right a chain whip click just down here